downstairs to check it out. And I'm reading the scene, well, partially because it had such a good lead up, and partially because this is my second favorite scene. My actual favorite scene involves a Christmas pageant gone horribly, horribly wrong. <laughs> it involves lots of different voices and sheep. And I've told for my attempt to be French. I don't do multiple voices very well, so you're just gonna have to read that one for yourself. How about the sheep? How about the sheep? <laughs> I can ball with the best, but only after a few drinks. <laughs> <laughs> I only had one event, so you're going to have to content yourself with this scene. So Arabella has just gone downstairs to try to figure out whether Catherine has tried to sneak out to elope again. And she sounded, of course, the proverbial open window. Arabella stumbled backwards, clutching at the curtains for balance, as the menacing form of a man leaned forward through the window. He filled the entire aperture blocking out the feeble light of the moon. He was huge, he was threatening, he was, Mr. Fitzhugh? Arabella squeaked. She hadn't realized her voice was capable of hitting that register. In real life, she was an alto. <laughs> In real life, pinks of the tom didn't pop out windows at her at strange hours of the night. <laughs> Mr. Fitzhugh didn't look like a pink of the tom now. His brightly patterned waistcoat and exuberant cravat had been replaced by a tight-fitting garment in a coarse, dark material, worn over a pair of equally dark pantaloons. Only his boots remained the same, but even those had been matted with, with soot to destroy their glossy finish. He had pulled a knit cap down over his bright hair, but bits stuck out of the sides, lending him a mildly maniacal look. <laughs> if Arabella had encountered him in a dark alley, she would have gone running in the opposite direction. One thing had changed, though. His smile was as exuberant as ever. He appeared completely unconcerned by the fact that she had caught him lurking outside the window of a young lady's seminary on the cusp of midnight, garbed in garments that could, with extreme charity, at best be termed bizarre. <laughs> Lovely night, ain't it, he said cheerfully, for all the world as if they'd run across each other in the pump room over steaming mugs of mineral water. He slapped his arms across his chest for warmth, Stars seem brighter here, don't you know? <laughs> Arabella rather doubted that Mr. Fitzhugh was lurking in Miss Clinton's shrubbery for the purpose of stargazing. What are you doing lurking under a window dressed like, like, like it? Rising <laughs> <laughs> to his full height, Mr. Fitzhugh executed a half turn. No! Arabella appeared left than right. You haven't seen anyone come this way, have you? Through the window, do you mean? Asked Mr. Fitzhugh as though it were a perfectly logical question. <laughs> Not recently. I should have noticed if they had. You haven't seen a girl, possibly with a man? She might have come this way. A girl? Mr. Fitzhugh appeared genuinely puzzled by this concept. An adolescent first person of the female persuasion, <laughs> Arabella clarified. Mr. Fitzhugh considered, no, none of those. Did see some of those lurking about through the curtains, but they were inside, not out. If she'd come through here, I would have known. Arabella frowned at Mr. Fitzhugh. The coast seemed to be clear, but they couldn't count on that. You can't be here, she said. Don't like to beat a dead chicken and whatnot, but I should think that I jolly well am. <laughs> Mr. Fitzhugh contemplated the ground at his feet, with its cracking pavement and the winter remains of flower bushes, now slightly squish. Looking up, he beamed at Arabella. Yep. Definitely still here. <laughs> there was something ridiculously infectious about Mr. Fitzhugh's smile. Yes, like the plague, Arabella told herself sternly, and forced her lips to stop grinning back. What I meant was that you shouldn't be here. Someone will see you. They haven't so far. Mr. Fitzhugh clapped his hands behind his back, doing his best to assume a modest expression. <laughs> I've been out here for four days, er, nights. Nights. Plural? Four? Arabella wrapped her arms around her chest. You've been sitting here in the garden for four nights. Mr. Fitzhugh twirled a bit of his watch chain around his finger. Well, five, really, if you count tonight. But since tonight is still tonight, didn't seem the done thing to add it to the tally. <laughs> Night not accomplished yet and all that, don't you know? <laughs> didn't she realize it was December and cold? She was cold just standing at the window. He was lucky it wasn't snowing. Haven't been here all night, said Mr. Fitzhugh virtuously. McGroom spells me. Splendid sort, Gherkin. Always good in a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> Arabella's brain balked at the vision of frozen servants bobbing in brine. Let's start
yard again. <laughs> what are you doing in the garden? And don't say talking to you. <laughs> about you, Mr. Fitz, you said confidingly, leaning his elbows on the windowsill. Didn't like the looks of that pudding. If there's something rum going on, I want to know what. Couldn't just leave you here to face it alone. Oh, said Arabella. Oh. She had meant to say something clever and stinging, but Mr. Fitzhugh's response was so entirely unexpected that the words faltered on her lips. He had been concerned about her? All this time when she had been convinced he had been off gadding and gallivanting. He had been huddling in the dirt beneath the drawing room window, watching to protect her. It was ridiculous, of course, and utterly mad, but it was still rather sweet. Thank you, she said. Although the words seemed entirely inadequate to express the sheer magnificent idiocy of his act. <laughs> You really shouldn't have. <laughs>